Hello everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to stretch a canvas. On this table are the materials you'll need for this project. First you'll need four stretcher bars to make up the four sides of your square or rectangle shaped canvas. Your local art store will likely have a wide variety of sizes to choose from. In this video, I'll be using two 9 inch and two 12 inch size stretcher bars. Depending on your desired look, you may choose between the standard or heavy duty thickness. These are the heavy duty stretcher bars seen here. They provide extra support and they look very nice in my opinion. Notice how one side is beveled and the other side is flat. The beveled side will support your canvas. The beveled edge suspends your canvas away from the stretcher, so you avoid any unsightly lines that would appear if you mistakenly use the reversed flat side of the stretcher. Other materials you will need include canvas pliers, a staple gun, extra staples, a hammer, a T-square ruler, and gesso. I use the Golden Brand Bright White Acrylic Gesso. The 32 ounce displayed here will be the best value for you if you're working on a large surface or plan to stretch more than one canvas. You will want to apply your gesso with the medium sized flat tip brush. Also pictured here is raw cut canvas. I'm using a heavyweight number 10 cotton duck. Your local art store will likely have rolls of canvas that they will sell to you measured out in three yard increments. Other items that will be useful in this project are scissors, water, and an empty cup. For the first step, we will take the four stretcher bars and link them together. If you are making a rectangle shaped canvas, then take your longer stretcher and line it up to the corner groove of the shorter stretcher. The stretchers must face the same direction for this to be done properly, so flat edge of one should line up with the flat edge of the other. Once the two pieces are together, line the corner of your T-square ruler up with the corner of the two stretchers to make sure you have a 90 degree angle. Once you feel confident that you do, with the flat edge of the stretchers facing up, take your staple gun and staple the two pieces together. I like to give it at least four to five staples to make sure it's secure. Use your hammer to tap down any loose staples. Continue until you have all four stretchers linked together. In the next step, we're going to cut the canvas down to size. Lay your canvas out flat on the table and place your connected stretchers on the canvas flat side up. The edge of the canvas should be parallel with the edge of the stretcher bar with a few inches of separation in between. Pull one edge of the canvas over the back edge of the stretcher bar until the edge of the canvas lines up with the inner edge of the stretcher bar as seen here. Now that you have determined the length of overlap needed on one edge, you can measure out the same width on the opposite side. After estimating the full width of the canvas, make a small cut on the edge of the canvas marking the location. Using the same method, determine the length of your canvas and make your second cut. All you need to do now is grab the two edges of the canvas where you made your cut and start to rip the two pieces apart. Due to the weave in the fabric, it will tear apart in a near perfect line. After removing any loose strings from the edge of your canvas, we are now ready to stretch the canvas over the stretcher bars. Make sure your stretcher bars are flat side up and center with the canvas. When you are certain the canvas is centered with your stretcher bars, fold the canvas over one edge and staple it down to the stretcher. The location of your staple should be dead center. Then go ahead and staple two more times, one on either side of the first. Turn your canvas around 180 degrees and we will do the same thing on the other side, 
Only this time, take your canvas pliers, clamp down on the canvas, and pull until you feel a fair amount of tension. Staple your canvas down three times as before. Now turn your canvas 90 degrees and repeat the previous steps until all four sides of your canvas have been stapled three times. By this point, if you turn the canvas over and look at the front side, you will notice a diamond shape beginning to form due to the tension created by the stapled canvas. Next, you will continue stapling your canvas using the canvas pliers to create tension as you go. Always staple from the center of the stretcher outwards, adding only a couple staples at a time before turning the canvas and balancing the tension on the opposite side. Folding Corners For the first corner, take your left hand and flatten the canvas down to the bottom edge like so. With your right hand, grab the corner of your canvas, pulling it tight so that the two sides fold together neatly. While holding the two sides together, fold it down into a 45 degree angle in the corner as shown here. Hold this shape in place with your left hand, then take your right hand and grab the center of the loose canvas that is poking outwards, pull it tight, and gently fold it over the first fold. If done correctly, the edge of the second fold should line up perfectly with the edge of your stretched canvas. Don't worry if the fabric is a little bulky in the back, just flatten it the best you can while holding some tension before you add your staples as demonstrated in the video. As you can see on the next corner, I reverse the direction of the folds so that my right hand is holding down the first fold and the left hand is pulling the second fold over. This way the bottom edge of the canvas makes a nice line parallel with the stretcher on one end of the stretch canvas. It may be a little tricky the first time you do this, but once you've done it a few times, it's a piece of cake. When complete, you will want to mirror these folds on the opposite end of the stretch canvas. Voila! Your canvas has been stretched. If you used a thick canvas like I did, the folds may be a little bulky on the back side, but that's okay. Most important is the front and side view. When looking at the canvas profile, the corner should have a clean appearance with minimal folds. Your goal is to have corners that look identical from the side no matter what angle you view it from. For the last step, I'll explain how to gesso your canvas. This step is especially important if you are painting with oils. If you skip the step, the oils will slowly eat away and destroy your canvas. First you'll want to dilute your gesso with water. Take your gesso and pour some into an empty cup. For my small canvas, I start with approximately half a cup of gesso. Then slowly add just a little bit of water, two tablespoons to start, and mix. Afterwards, using your brush, go ahead and apply the gesso to the front and sides of your canvas. If the mixture is too thick and hard to apply, add a little more water and try again. Once the surface is fully covered, wait until it's dry to touch, approximately one hour, before adding your next layer. For acrylic paintings, I would suggest adding a minimum of two layers of gesso and a minimum of three layers for oil paintings. Congratulations, your canvas has been stretched and prepared. Now all you have to do is gather your paints and get to work. If you found this video to be helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. In my next video, I'll show you how to do a photo transfer to canvas. If you want to learn more about me and see some of the work I do, please visit my website, christinakoskiart.com.